But you know, one of the greatest acts that we have on record of Jesus interceding is the cross. And then the other dynamic of intercession we have is the woman taken in adultery. Jesus is sitting down and all of a sudden he stands up and he says, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. I believe that we live in a day and a time where intercession means we begin to stand up. It means we begin to hold the space that God has given us. It means we begin to say, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. It means that we are willing to be strength for other people's weakness. It means that we are willing to actually be a living, breathing expression of the gospel, that they actually see what is on our lives, that we are light everywhere we go. And we don't have to tell people that we're Christians. They actually know that there is an anointing on our life. When I go to the grocery store, my boys will say things like, please don't make eye contact with anybody. We don't want anybody crying. We want to just go in, get the yogurt, and get out. We're not, this is not going to be a long-term thing. And so I've just had to learn to go to the grocery store by myself because it isn't about having a message. It's about you are a message. You are a messenger. I love that Pastor Bill was telling you, you need to tip well. You need to be kind. You need to be generous. Everything about our lives needs to bear some weight and act like what Jesus would do and not tell people they're all going to hell, but actually introduce them to heaven. Second Peter 3 says, hold your minds in a state of undistracted attention. God is poised, ready to speak his word again, ready to give a signal. God is looking for us to be prepared, to be on high alert. So I want to actually Look at you and figure out where that place is that you need to add some more weight to those barbells, that you need to actually build some more strength. Because I'm tired of the church being skinny fat. I'm tired of the church only looking good in her environment and in her clothing. I want the church to look good in every environment and in every setting. I want her to represent love and strength and hope and faith. So I want you to stand to your feet right now. And I want to pray over you. I love to pray scary prayers. I love to pray mafia prayers. Do you know that we are living in a day and a time where we can't just be like, oh, bless him, Jesus. Do you know we have ISIS taking sex slaves, beheading Christians, Do you understand we live in a day and a time where Christians are being martyred on our own soil? Do you know this is not a time for sweet prayers? These are times for fierce, scary prayers. But to pray fierce, scary prayers, you have to be ready for the backlash on it. And one of my favorite all-time fierce, scary prayers is found in Psalm 10. And I'm going to read it to you out of the message. Because I look around, I'm like, God, do you know about this? And then after myself, yeah, he actually knows all about it. He says, but you know all about it. The contempt, the abuse. I dare to believe that the luckless will get lucky someday in you. You won't let them down. Orphans won't be orphans forever. Break the wicked right arms. Break all the evil left arms. Search and destroy every sign of crime. God's grace and order wins Godlessness loses. The victim's faint pulse picks up. The hearts of the hopeless pump red blood. As you put your ear to their lips, orphans get parents, homeless get homes, and the reign of terror is over. And the rule of the gang lords is ended. We need to be a people who can pray these kind of prayers. So I want to pray that God will release a boldness in your life. Because I think you know by now that boldness on my life is not a function of my personality. It is a function of an impartation of the Spirit of God on my life. And for you to be everything that God has for you, it's going to take an increased level of boldness, an increased level of God's Spirit on your life. So Father, I thank you right now for divine release of a spirit of strength 
a spirit of courage, a spirit of moral fortitude, a spirit of fiber, a spirit of metal. Father, I thank you that these will be people who will having done all to stand, they will continue to stand. Father, these are people that will be muscular in the spirit. They're not going to be skinny fat and they're not going to be fat fat. They're going to do push-ups. They're going to do jumping jacks. They're going to remain when everybody else leaves. They're going to press forward when other people fall back. So Father, I speak to that spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind.